Welcome to worship here at St. James St. Matthew's Lutheran Church on this August 30th in the year 2020. This is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. And we, before we jump right into worship, just a couple of announcements. Yes, the date has been set for us to resume in-person worship here at St. James St. Matthew's Lutheran Church. And that date is September 13th at 10 a.m. So it's Sunday, September 13th at 10 a.m. I want you to also check out the Welcome Back St. James St. Matthews video that we produced. It's about 12 minutes long. Take some time out. Um, we'll send it out again this week so you can get a chance to look at it and see what is expected of you and what we will be doing in order to have a safe environment for us to worship in during this pandemic. And lastly, with regards to Sunday school, I know some, some of you may have been asking that question. We have decided to put Sunday school and other in-person meetings on hold, continue to have those on hold until further notice for the while being as we try and make our way back slowly and gradually into this worship space here during this pandemic. So with that in mind, just let us um, know if you have any questions, if you have any concerns as you look at this video, and also um, if you think about anything else that we have not considered in that video. Um, let us know. So now let us jump right into worship with our greeting and our prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your command. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us join together with our hymn of praise. Thank you, Lord. says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. I come before you today And there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you Blessings that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name.
you, Lord. Our psalm for today comes to us from Psalm 26, beginning to read from the first verse. Let us read together Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I did not sit with the worthless, nor do I concert with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands of in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar. Sing aloud with song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Amen. Our Holy Gospel comes to us from St. Matthew chapter 16, reading from verses 21 through 28. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block for me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my follower, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what would it profit them if they gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his glory. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. For those of you who know me outside of Sunday morning in church, you would know that I have an interest in golf. And since golf was the most popular game in this summer due to the pandemic, it wouldn't hurt for me to share a few tips with you. You see, I'm convinced that if Jesus knew about golf, one of his sayings would have been, the kingdom of God is like the game of golf. The kingdom of God is like the game of golf. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to be putting words into Jesus' mouth, for I say this to emphasize the bizarre nature, at least to us, about the kingdom of God. And that of the game of golf as well. For if you've tried playing it, you would realize that it's a game of opposites. A game of opposites. You have to hit the ball down, compress it into the ground in order for it to go up. And the harder you swing the club doesn't always translate into how far the ball goes. But the slower and the rhythm the smoother the swing produces more distance. And hear this, the, per the player, the person with the lowest score wins. The person with the lowest score wins. As for the kingdom of God, the way of life goes through death. The way of life goes through death. Jesus is saying to his first disciples and to us today, whoever wants to be my disciple 
must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. The kingdom of God, as you can tell, is beyond human reasoning. Whoever is concerned with securing their own life will lose it. But the one who actually loses his, his or her life for the sake of extending and expanding the kingdom of God is the one who finds it. Life experiences teach us that we do everything in pursuit of happiness only to be eluded by it. But when we try to make others happy, it is most fulfilling. Perhaps, perhaps this was what St. Francis of Assisi meant when he put these words into a prayer. Words like this, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. And where there's sadness, joy. O oh Lord, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled, but to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that I am pardoned. And it is in dying that I am born to eternal life. Wow. Wow. It is difficult for us to wrap our minds around such an out of the world teaching. It is countercultural for us living in 21st century to understand that the path to life goes through death itself. That sacrifices made on behalf of others are worth more than any riches we can accumulate for ourselves. I once heard an interview with a presidential candidate who was asked, what sacrifices have you made in your life? His response was, I built some beautiful buildings. I built some beautiful buildings. I get it. The world doesn't revolve around me. It's the other way around. For this is what kingdom living requires. When Jesus talks about cross and death, Jesus is talking about his own death, his own sacrifice, his sacrificial death on the cross for all of humanity. Yes, Jesus took our places so that we will in turn sacrifice for others here and now. Jesus did not have to die, my friends. He was the only human being who has ever lived over whom death had no dominion, no power at all. But he gave his life as a ransom freely for you and for me. God sent Jesus to show us what being committed to kingdom living is and what it really entails. Not just our leftover time, not just our leftover energy at the end of the day or spare change after we finish taking care of our own needs. But everything, our every breath, every fiber of our being in service to God and in service to our neighbors, we have from God. So, what sacrifices have you made? Agreed, not all of us are called to be in the front line of a pandemic. Not all of us are called to be first responders or in service to others. But think about it. How have you made an impact 
on the life of others. My friends, Jesus did it first for you. Jesus died so that you can live and experience life abundantly. And now, now Jesus is calling on you to deny yourself and share, to make that sacrifice, to give of yourself for the sake of others. What will it be? How will you shape your sacrifice for the sake of others? How will you deny yourself? Amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of the day. We are all one in mission. Let us sing together. Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in God's care, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Your response being, Hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of faithfulness, you bid us to follow Jesus. Set, so set our minds, the mind of your church, on divine things. Grant us trust in you. 
that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation. Heal your creation and give us and those entrusted with power eyes to see the world as you do. That all of us of humanity bear your image. We pray this day for the city of Kenosha, Wisconsin, and for all who have been affected by yet another police shooting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even when we name them as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promised to deliver us. And so we pray that you give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and your love. Accompany those who are in grief or uncertainty. Raise the spirit of those, lift them, for those who are despairing and those who are in need of your healing touch. Hold those affected by COVID-19, the wildfires, the hurricanes, and gun violence plaguing, especially New York City. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. And so we pray that you would make our congregation a, a workshop of your love, an instrument of your love. Help us to overcome evil with good, especially in the planning to resume in-person worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, you, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste, foretaste of that feast to come, when all of us will be reunited together again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing separates us from your love, O Lord, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, dear friends, until we meet again, stay well, stay cool, be calm, and stay in touch. And now receive this blessing as we depart. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Now let us sing our sending hymn, When Peace Like a River. Peace.